opportunities come your way all the way from Ghana. Before we go into the word of God, I want us to say a quick word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We bless your holy name for the opportunity to come before you. As women, we have gathered from our homes. As women, we have busy life and we have come to hear you. Like Mary and Martha, we have left all and we have come to sit under your feet to hear you speak to our hearts. And so, Lord, speak to our heart and transform our minds. I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will breathe upon his word. And his word, which is a seed, will take root in our hearts. And that we will manifest what God has designed the word to be. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, and in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, I want to say a big thank you to the Archbishop of Church of God Mission International for this privileged opportunity. Uh, the Most Reverend Margaret Benson Edahosa, President General, Christian Women Fellowship International. And our Vice President, our President who is the host of this 2020 convention and also to the international ESCO and all and everybody that makes the convention a reality. I say kudos to all of us. I humbly say thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak to all these women and I cherish this moment greatly. Thank you so very much. Okay, my topic that has been given to me says focus on Christ for productivity. Focus on Christ for productivity. Exodus 38, the verse 8. Uh, you know, I was raised by Nigerians. I went to Bible school there for two years. So I've been with you and I've been consistent in your convention for almost 20 years. So I, I can speak a little pigeon and I'm going to flow with you. Okay, so Exodus 38, the verse 8, it says, He made the labor of bronze and its base of bronze from the bronze mirrors of the seven women who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. He made the labor of bronze and its base of bronze from the bronze mirrors of the seven women who assembled at the door of the tabernacle. This is Exodus 38, the verse 8. Moses has brought the children of God all the way from Egypt after a quarantine. Did we know that in Egypt, before God brought them out from Egypt, there was a, a, a period when uh, God killed all the, uh, what, the firstborns of Egyptians and he asked them to stay indoors and eat the Passover. He quarantined them and they took to the word of God. They obeyed God's instruction. They stayed indoors and God ushered them from Egypt. He ushered them from slavery. He ushered them from oppression. He ushered them from disgrace. He ushered them from embarrassment. He ushered them from anything that threatened their destiny, their purpose, and their reason for living. And these women, men, everybody, but in this case, I'm focusing on the women. They moved. They went through the Red Sea and came to the wilderness a place they wanted to settle. And God was about to build the tabernacle. The tabernacle has to do with the temple. It depicts the presence of God with his people, the dwelling presence. You know, the cloud has been moving with them during the day. Then the fire comes by night to give them light. But now, God wanted them to settle for a period of time. For them to be established and to be productive, he needed to dwell with them. And he was about to build the tabernacle and he, need, he needed the mirrors of the women. 
And I, I, I thought about the whole thing. I'm like, why would God is so interesting? Why would He go to women and ask them for mirrors? Wow! I mean, it sounded. I, I saw that God knows everything about us. He knows everything about you. As you have gathered via Zoom, as you have gathered at Beni City, at the feet of God, God knows you and knows what you need. And he has already gone ahead. And I'm telling you, by virtue of this thing, it shows that God was thinking about us. It's so prophetic. And there's a prophetic move of cloud. The dwelling presence is with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the word of God keeps telling us, these people, were, uh, Moses was about to build the uh, tabernacle and then he needed to take offerings. God asked him, take offerings from these people. And for the women who served at the tent, the tent is like a temporary built up place where uh, worship was going on. And God wanted to build the tabernacle. And these women have been serving in the, te- in the tent of God. The Bible says the seven women, women are known by seven. We are known by blessing people. We are known because we carry uh, children in our womb. You know when God was creating us, he looked at the man, he said it's not good for man to be alone. He was not only talking about marriage, he was looking at redemption in future if his dream is thwarted who will be the agent to restore and this was the agent for restoration the woman that god has created he put a womb in the woman so that when the enemy tempers with the vision he tempers with god's dream then god can find a way to bring jesus into the world and restore the whole plan and that is was the reason for womanhood and if somebody is hearing me celebrate god for going ahead of the enemy far ahead of time in eternity and that is why your destiny cannot be disrupted hallelujah hallelujah and god was about to build a temple and he asked the women for their mirrors in the wilderness so let's look at what mirror means to a woman but you see mirror has a way of telling you truth or lying to you and these women had all manners of mirrors and God was about to build a temple and he asked the women for mirrors in the wilderness where there is no shop to buy another one and I'm like how will these women remind themselves of who they are because you see in the, uh, what do you call it, uh, in, in Egypt, they have a certain mindset of themselves. They saw their husbands as slaves, they saw their children as slaves, they saw themselves as slave married people or women that were serving and under oppression, all manners of negativity. And in the wilderness where God was about to build the temple, he needed their mirror so that they can change their identity, hallelujah. They can because when you look into the mirror, it reminds you of who you are. You see who you are. And God needed the mirror so that they cannot look into any mirror, but look into the mirror of the word of God. Hallelujah. So I'm looking at this scripture and I'm saying God is an interesting God. He wants us to focus on him. He wants us to focus and fix our gaze upon him. After the trials, after the problems, whatever God has, uh, the enemy has done in your life, if you can focus on Christ, if you can focus on God, restoration will take place. And God took their mirrors, every mirror. And you know, mirrors are connected to vanity. When, when men see we, uh, women looking into the mirror, their face thought is like, hey, with your open home, papa. That is true, right? It means, ah, this lady is Sabi like himself, papa. But God knew all this and he took the mirrors from the women. And guess what he built with it? Hmm. When he was taking it, Moses was complaining. Why would God ask for such a thing at, uh, for, 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 for a holy place? How will God ask Miro to build something in a holy place? 
things that women look to and they, they, they feel good about themselves and all that, why will God, something that depicts vanity, why is God asking women to give it to them? Because it has a way of giving them a certain identity and a focus. But God wanted to break that focus and cause them to focus on him to be productive. Hallelujah. To be productive. And so, we see these seven women, and I'm glad it's seven women. Women who find themselves in the house of God. Women who have been serving in the house of God. And that's the call, that is the call that God is giving to us today. We've been serving, we've been certain, and God is calling on us to begin to focus on him. Right now, the media is calling our attention, social media. We wake up, the first thing that calls us is YouTube. The first thing, the second thing that calls us is a uh, Facebook. The first thing, uh, Facebook is like a mirror. Every day people are looking inside for their identity. How many likes they have, the picture they posted, and that is what they build their self-esteem on. And the social media, women, the Instagram, WhatsApp, they are all taking our attention. And God is asking us, to begin to focus on him because we are in dangerous times if you want life you must focus on life if you want increase you must focus on increase if you want courage you must focus on courage and the only thing that can give you that kind of supernatural courage supernatural increase supernatural productivity will be your ability to focus on Christ because what is happening today in the world, everywhere, nobody can run to any place. Nowhere is safe except in Christ and who you are focusing on. Hallelujah. And who you are focusing on. So it's very, very important. And God asked them for the uh, mirrors and built a labor basin. The labor basin is put at the entrance of the, uh, what do you call it, the inner tent, where when the priests are going to perform their rite, they have to wash their hands in that basin. And the Bible tells us if the priest does not wash his hands, if he never washes his hands for their basin, and he say you go inside, he's going to perform, uh, uh, what do you call it, rituals, or going to pray, going to worship, now death, he die. Can you imagine what women produced in the house of God? They produced something that gave life. They produced something that gave people joy. They produced something, their mirrors were, it was uh, made into something that when men put their hands inside, they begin to live. They can go before God. They can uh, be effective. They can have impact. They can have influence. And so I want you to, as a child of God, as a woman of God, I know we are the concerned women. We are the compassionate women. We are the uh, caring women. We are the Christian women. And of course, we are the what? Quiffy women. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you today, God needs your mirror. Whatever has been building your identity and taking your power of focus, God is asking for that thing today. Let's sacrifice it. The women in the Old Testament sacrificed theirs and they had no mirror to look up to except the mirror of Christ. Let me read my final scripture and then off we go. I thank you for uh, the word of God and I bless God for this opportunity. Hebrews, um, what do you call it, 1, from the verse 2 to 3, it talks about, it says, Who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having come to much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Hallelujah. So, he said Jesus is what? He said Jesus is the brightness of his glory. He is God's brightness. 
He's the one. When you look into his eyes, every darkness in your life begins to float away. He's the one. When you look into his eyes, every sickness begins to look up. As you focus on the word of God, this word, which is the spiritual mirror, as we look into it every day, as we gaze ourselves, find who we are, what we have, what he did, where we are, these are the things we search in the scriptures and we profess them and we proclaim them and we declare them and we enforce them as women and give life to people, influence, power, passion. This is what the word of God does. And I thank God for today, for the opportunity. Now change your focus and build your identity. All right, so thank you so much for the opportunity. Let's pray and you know, you cannot do these things without uh, giving your life to Christ. He said the women that were at the tent. So if you are not in the tent, God cannot give you a new identity. So if you haven't given your life to Jesus, I want you to take this opportunity and say this prayer after me and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for giving me, showing me so much love by letting your only son come to die for me. I receive him as my Lord and personal savior. I receive every good thing he did for me on the cross. And I ask that my sins as he purged is purged from my life. And I thank you that I have a new life, a new mind, a new heart, a new being. I am healed. I am whole. I am powerful because your presence is with me in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We celebrate your goodness. We thank you for your word that as women, we hand over all our mirrors. Whatever is giving us the wrong identity, we throw it down at your feet today as the sacrifice to build that labor where life can come from. I declare over your life that God's peace surround you in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, and in his holy name, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So greetings from Ghana. We love you. We thank God that we can still connect and be a blessing to the Esco and to everybody. Bye from us.